Today we're going to look at a very common application of integration found in like mechanical engineering when we need to find a volume of an odd three-dimensional shape. Often we'll do it by a process called slicing. The question we're going to answer is how do we find the volume of a curve rotated around an axis. And to set this up, we're going to look first at the idea of what's going on in the background to come up with a general form. And then we'll try several examples. So first, uh, we're going to use what's called the disk method. And the idea of the disk method is we're going to have a curve and we're going to take that curve and we're going to rotate it around the x-axis and we're going to end up with this three-dimensional shape as a result. This three-dimensional shape that's rotated around the x-axis taking that function f of x and say, let's spin it around the x-axis, if I can try and draw in 3D. We want to find the volume of that shape. And the way we're going to find that volume is we're going to cut a slice out of it. And that slice is going to have some thickness to it. We're going to want that thickness to be really small. So we'll call that thickness d of x. And notice that ends up, if I rotate it flat, what we end up with is a cylinder with a very thin height called d of x. The radius of that cylinder, you'll notice, is exactly the distance from the x-axis to our function f of x. In other words, the radius of that cylinder is f of x. So if I want to calculate the volume of that individual cylinder, the volume of a cylinder is the area of the base, pi r squared, times the height. Or in our case, pi times the radius, which is the function, squared, times the height, which is this small, tiny d of x. And what you'll notice is if we cut cylinders like this all the way through the shape, kind of like slicing a loaf of bread, all the way from a low point of A to a high point of B, if we want the volume of all of them together, we'll just integrate that distance from A to B of each of those volumes of pi times f of x squared dx. And that gives us the volume of all of the slices that we've cut. Now, this pi is a constant, so let's move the pi out front. And so for our final volume formula, pi times the integral from a to b of the function squared dx is how we can cut our shape into disks, skinny little disks, and calculate the volume of all of the disks between A and B. That's the disk method. Now, there's one variation of this disk method that can come up, and I want to look at that real quick. It's really based on the same idea. The idea is we've got some function. We'll call it f of x. But the problem is there's another function. Actually, let's color code this. We'll do f of x in blue. And I'll do g of x in green. Maybe, maybe it spins like this. And when I try and rotate this function around the x-axis, Yes, we'll end up with f of x mirror down here, but also g of x is mirror down here. 
And what you see happens is we still end up with these circles going around the graph. But there's a hole down the center of our f of x function. So f of x is solid. But there's a hole down the center formed by that second function below the g of x. If we were to cut a slice out of this guy, our slice would have a hole in the center. So here's our slice. There's the hole in the center. It's still going to have some width to it. We'll call that width d of x still. But now we've got this hole in the center. And it almost looks less like a disk and more like a washer. So we'll call this the washer method. A washer has a hole in the center. So when we're finding the volume here, we've got to account for the fact that we've cut a hole out. And notice that hole, the height of that hole is that g of x function. And the radius of the big circle is the f of x function. So again, if we want the volume of this entire shape, we'll still have to do pi times the big radius squared times the height. But then we're going to have to subtract off that hole cut out the center, which is pi times the little radius squared times the height. So plugging in our function, volume is equal to pi times the big radius, which is our f of x squared, times the height, which is dx, minus pi times the little radius, g of x squared, times the height of dx. Ran out of space. So give me a little more space. I'm going to factor out the pi out front, because they both have a pi. And I'm going to factor the dx out to the right, because they both have a dx, which is going to give us f of x squared minus g of x squared is the volume of one slice. But again, we want the entire volume. So if I slice this guy all the way through like I'm slicing a loaf of bread, all the way from a lower limit of a to an upper limit of b, what we're really saying is we want to integrate from a to b pi times the f of x squared minus the g of x squared dx, or because pi is a constant, we can pull it out front. Our volume is the integral from a to b, pi times the integral from a to b of f of x squared minus g of x squared dx. And so if we have a hole in the middle, we can use what's called the washer method. And very similar to how I found the area between two curves, where we took the top integral minus the bottom integral, we do the same thing with the volume and take the top function minus the bottom one and integrate over our distance to find the total volume of our shape with a hole down the center. All right, so this is the logic we're using. Let's actually try it and find some volumes. Let's do some examples. Let 
let's find the volume of a solid of revolution formed by rotating f of x equals 1 over x over the interval from 1 to 2. So we've got our function 1 over x. We're going to go from 1 to 2. So we're going to rotate it. See how my 3D drawing does? We're going to rotate it around the x-axis. Notice this does not have a hole through it. So we're going to use our disk method to find its total volume. The volume is pi times the integral from a to b. Notice we have a lower limit of 1 and a high upper limit of 2. Integral from 1 to 2 of the radius, which is just the function, 1 over x, or x to the negative 1, squared dx. Pi times the integral of the radius squared dx. Simplifying a bit, multiplying the exponent through, we get x to the negative 2 dx. And this integral is really easy for us to take. We've got pi times x to the negative 1 divided by negative 1 makes it negative, integrated from 1 to 2. Plugging in, we have pi times negative x to the negative 1. 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half plus, plugging 1 in is 1. So when we simplify that, negative 1 half plus 1 is just a half, or pi over 2. So the volume of this shape rotated around the x-axis between 1 and 2 is pi over 2 square units. Let's try another example. Let's find the volume by rotating f of x equals the square root of 4 minus x and y equals 0 over the interval from 0 to 4 around the x-axis. So we've got the square root of 4 minus x. And we've got y equals 0, which kind of provides the bottom of our shape. And we're going to go from 0 to 4. And then we'll rotate that around the x-axis. And we almost end up with this cone-looking thing that we're going to find the volume of. So volume is equal to pi times the integral of our distance from 0 to 4 of the function, the radius. The height of the function is the square root of 4 minus x squared dx. And that's really nice because when we square, we just get 4 minus x dx which is an integral we can take very quickly. So we have pi times 4x minus x squared over 2 integrated from 0 to 4, which is equal to pi times plugging the 4 in. 4 times 4 is 16 minus 4 squared is 16 divided by 2 is 8. And then we plug the 0 in, but that's just 0. And so we end up with 16 minus 8, or 8 pi, for our volume formed by rotating the square root of 4 minus x 
around the x-axis between 0 and 4, 8 pi square units. We took these first two and we rotated around the x-axis. There's no reason we have to rotate around the x-axis. We can rotate around anything, although the axes are always easier. Let's find the volume by rotating y equals 2x over the interval from 1 to 4. But this time, we're going to rotate around the x-axis. Oops, not the x-axis, the y-axis. We've already done the x-axis. So we know y equals 2x starts at the origin and comes up with a slope of 2 over 1. We want to go from 1 to 4. And that's what's going to rotate around the x-axis. So it's going to kind of make this cone-looking shape with its top cut off. Well, if we're rotating around the y-axis, we have to change everything in terms of y so we can integrate as y goes up. So we need to know first what values are we integrating between. So when x is 1, what is our y value? Well, that's easy. Plug 1 into our equation, and y is equal to 2. So we've got a height of 2. When x is 4, what is our y value? Well, y is equal to 2 times 4, so y is equal to 8. So now we can see that the volume is equal to pi times the integral as our y's are climbing from 2 to 8. But our radius now needs to be in terms of y. So we also need to take our function and make it an x equals function. So if y equals 2x, x is equal to y over 2. squared dy. So if we're rotating around the y-axis, the only difference is we have to change everything into y's. Sometimes you already have it in terms of y, which is the reason it's easier to do it around the y-axis. But if everything's in terms of y's, then we integrate from the low y to the high y. We take our y function and square it, take the derivative or the integral dy, and we're ready to go. Solving from here is simple. We're going from 2 to 8 of y squared over 4 dy. So that gives us a volume of pi times y cubed divided by 12 integrated from 2 to 8. Plugging in, we've got pi times 8 cubed divided by 12 minus 2 cubed divided by 12. And if I plug that parentheses in my calculator, I get 42. Don't forget the pi. 42 pi square or cubic units is the volume of this shape rotated around the y-axis. We haven't done any washers yet, so let's try a washer problem. Let's find the volume by rotating the region bounded by f of x equals the square root of x, g of x equals 1 over x over the interval from 1 to 3 about the x-axis. So f of x is the square root of x. g of x is 1 over x. 
And we're integrating from 1 to 3. And now what's interesting to note is when x is 1, that's where they actually intersect each other. Because the square root of 1 is the same as 1 over 1. But then we're going to cut our slice. And so let's see if we can make the same shape on the other side. I think the hardest part of today's lesson is drawing in 3D. going to rotate at 1 and rotate at 3. That's what's going to create our hole. And we want to find the volume of this shape that has this hole in the bottom of it. We know our volume is equal to pi times the integral, we're going, x's are going from 1 to 3. And this time, we're going to subtract the square of the functions. So first, the tall function, the tall function is the square root of x squared. And then we have to subtract out that whole, which is x to the negative 1 squared dx. Or simplifying, we have pi times the integral from 1 to 3 of x minus x to the negative 2 dx. We're really good at taking these integrals by now. We have pi times x squared divided by 2. When we take our antiderivative here, we get x to the negative 1 divided by negative 1, which is going to change that minus to a plus. And we're integrating from 1 to 3. Plugging 3 in, 3 squared is 9 halves. Plus, plugging 3 in, we get 1 third. Minus, plug the 1 in, 1 half minus 1. Plug that into the calculator, hit the math button, we get 10 thirds pi, or 10 pi over 3 cubic units is the volume of this shape that we get when we rotate around the x-axis by subtracting out the hole in the middle. Let's do one last example that's maybe a little more involved. But now we have all the tools we need to find the volume by rotating the region bounded by f of x equals x plus 2, g of x equals x squared, and x equals 0. We've already got the word rotated. About the y-axis. So this time, we're doing the y-axis. x equals 0. That provides a nice boundary right on the y-axis. We've got f of x equals x plus 2, which we know is a straight line starting at 2. And then we've also got x squared, which curves up. And it gives us this weird shape. That's x squared. But when we rotate that around the x axis or the y axis, we end up with this interesting shape. A hole down the center. So solid, rotated around, kind of has this triangle dug out of the center. But that triangle doesn't go all the way down this time. It only goes part way down. Let's see if we can figure out uh, our key points here. The obvious one is 0, 0. We're interested in the y-coordinate mainly. 
We want to know where that hole stops. How deep does that hole go? That's where that x plus 2 hits the y-axis. And you might remember that the y-intercept on x plus 2 is 2. Or if you weren't sure, we know the x-coordinate there is 0. So 0 plus 2 equals y, or y equals 2. We also need to figure out the height. And that's where the two functions hit each other. That's where the x plus 2 is equal to the x squared. So if I subtract it off, we get x squared minus x minus 2. Factoring, we get x minus 2 times x plus 1. Solving that then, we get x equals a positive 2 or negative 1. So we can see x is equal to a positive 2, not the negative 1, because that's not part of our graph. That's past our 0. We don't need to worry about that one. But if x is negative 2, we're revolving around the y-axis. We need to know the y-coordinate. So when x is 2, what is our y equal to? Well, we can plug it into either function. I'll plug it into g of x. g of 2 is 2 squared, or 4. So our final height there is 4. Now that we've found all the important features of this graph, we're ready to find the volume. First, let's think about just the outside. If there wasn't a hole cut into this graph, if that cone wasn't cut out of the graph, the volume would be equal to pi times the integral as y goes from 0 to 4 of that outside function. The outside function is y equals x squared. We need to put it in terms of y, so the square root of y must equal x. So the square root of y squared dy, because we always square the radius. That would give us the volume of the entire thing. The problem is the hole is cut out, but the hole doesn't go all the way down. So let's subtract the hole and just find the volume of that piece. The volume of that piece is pi times the integral, this time going from just 2 to 4. And now we need the function of the whole, which is the y equals x plus 2. But because we rotate it around the y-axis, we have to solve for x. So y minus 2 equals x. y minus 2 squared dy. And now we have our integrals that we can solve to find the volume. For our first one, actually, let's just simplify this first by doing the squaring. Pi times the integral from 0 to 4 of y dy minus pi times the integral from 2 to 4 of y squared minus 4y plus 4 dy. We're going to move quickly through the integrating because we should be really good with this part by now. We have y squared over 2 integrated from 0 to 4 minus pi times y cubed over 3 minus 2x squared plus, oops, not x, y squared plus 4y integrated from 2 to 4. All right, plug in what we know. We've got pi times. Plug in the 4. 4 squared is 16. Divided by 2 is 8. Plugging the 0 in gives us nothing. Minus pi times. Plugging the 4 in. 4 cubed is 64 thirds. Minus 4 squared is 16 times 2 is 32 plus. 4 times 4 is 16. And then we'll subtract off, plugging the 2 in. 2 cubed is 8 thirds plus 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8 minus 4 times 2 is 8. And let's plug all that into the calculator. And when we put it all together, we'll end up with 16 pi over 3. 
So that's what I want you to take a look at today for our assignments. We are doing the disk method and the washer method as we find the volume of a region formed by rotating one or two or more graphs around either the x-axis or the y-axis. Our general formula is the same, though. Pi times the integral of the function squared dx. Try some of these, and we'll talk about them more in class.